Welcome back, welcome back to the False Prophet Channel. And this is Brother Jacob, and this is the False Prophet Channel, where we get Islam busted and the false prophet of Islam, Muhammad, busted on a regular basis. But in this episode, we will be getting busted once again, the little sissy by the name of Muslim Cheerleader. That's right. This is his YouTube channel. He goes by the name of Muslim Warrior. But we all know that he is a sissy. He is a coward, just like his prophet. And he is a afraid to debate anybody like myself because he knows what happens each and every time he tries to challenge me. So I am making this video specifically for you, Muslim cheerleader, and I want you to edit this video and I want you to, you know, debunk what I'm saying. I want you to debunk what I'm about to read to my subscribers. Are you up for the challenge, coward? You've been challenging me in the comments section and each and every time you get utterly destroyed. So this is a open challenge for you, Muslim cheerleader. I want you to debunk what i am saying now let's get right into the video he left a he left a message in his community post and it says the idiot got exposed and is saying his god is love while calling me a swine blah 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 now this wasn't even directed to me this was actually directed to Acts Truth Apologetics. So I want to get him exposed on behalf on behalf of Acts Truth Apologetics. I don't even know him. He has commented commented under one of my videos before. So shout out to him, Acts Truth Apologetics. But anyway, this Abdul he posted something about you know someone calling him a swine. But I want him to post the comment that i have been leaving him for the longest people and it's like he's been ducking this he don't want to address it and he's a hypocrite by saying that someone is calling him a swine because this is the same guy who has repeatedly called me the n-word over over and over again you can look in the comment sections he loves to say nigga this and nigga that he does that constantly so he is a little coward he's a hypocrite and now we are about to get him exposed with this comment that i left now let's read that's me that you see right there the false prophet and this is the comment well i left him one one of the comments says abdul you are the hypocrite you call me the N-word on a daily basis. But that's not what we want to focus on right now. This is the comment that I want you to see. Now, this comment that I'm about to read to you right now, it totally smashes the Muslims claim that, number one, that Allah is outside of time and space. But even more devastating than that, this comment proves that by Muslims making the claim that Allah is outside of time and space, they also destroy the idea that Allah is a living God. So what we are about to do right now, we are about to prove that Allah is dead. Now, let's jump right into it. This is the comment that I left Muslim cheerleader. I said, how about you post our conversation, Abdul? The question I asked you, how can Allah be outside of time and space when he has a shin, face, and hands which have measurements and measurements take up space and space and time coexist, i.e. the space and time continuum. And Allah has Thoughts, thoughts, correct, Abdul? And to think requires a will. And once you will a thought into existence, it requires speed, 
i.e. the speed of thought. So if Allah is outside of time and space, that means his thoughts must also be disconnected from him because thoughts require speed. And when you think, it requires a moment. So if Allah is outside of time and space, then how can he think, Abdul? Because thoughts occur in moments and moments equal a span of time. Busted, coward. How about you post this comment, buddy? Go ahead and expose me, Abdul. Prove me wrong then, sissy boy. Prove what I said to be wrong. You can't do it. So this means that your Allah does not even think. And anything that doesn't think is dead. So Allah is dead. He doesn't exist, Abdul, because if he is outside of time and space, that means he never has a moment to think and to develop thoughts because a moment is a measurement within time. So when you Muslims say Allah is outside of time and space, you prove to us that Allah is dead. He has no active consciousness and is unable to produce thoughts because thoughts take place inside of a moment. It's over, Abdul. I'm actually about to make a video about this titled Proof That Allah Is Dead. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. And I kept my promise. I told you, boy, in the voice of Muhammad Hijab, I told you, boy. Those claims that you Muslims make come with severe theological repercussions. Go ahead. Expose me, coward. Read this out loud to your subscribers. Prove me wrong, Abdul. LOL. And I'm about to show this to at Ask Truth Apologetics. Yes. So as you see, and you know, I even shared this information with another uh, Christian apologist. Um. I also left a comment for Sam Shamoon because I don't think, you know, I don't even think Sam Shamoon has even hit it like this. As much as I respect Sam Shamoon and, you know, listen to him, he knows way more than I know about the Bible and Islam. I can't even, you know, I can't be in a conversation with, with someone like him. I have to listen to someone like that. But even still... I don't even think Sam Shamoon or Christian Prince or someone like Rob Christian, I don't even think they have exposed how to show. I mean, we already know that Allah is dead, but this argument, man, this is irrefutable. OK, now what I'm requesting Muslim warriors to do, I want you to post this comment on your channel and I want you to read it to your audience. And then leave the link to my video on your community on your community post. Let's see how brave you are. Do you have the the testosterone to do it? I don't think so. You know, you're not on my level. Each and every time you try to challenge me, like I said, Abdul, I am like quicksand. The more you struggle with me, the deeper you go under. Now. Let me break it down to everybody that was listening. Now, this argument right here, no Muslim can go against this because this is what you, the next time a Muslim tells you that Allah is outside of time and space, this is what you say to them in simple words. Say, if Allah, how can, say this to them, say, how can Allah be outside of time and space when it says that Allah has a shin he has a face and he has two right hands. And those things that I just named, they are body parts and they have a measurement and measurements take up space and space and time coexist with each other. The space and time continuum. Now, after you say that to them, then then you say this. Also, when you Muslims say that Allah is outside of time and space, you have just told me that Allah is dead. Because when you think 
it requires will. Then the thought that you think, it comes about with a speed. For instance, if you just think about something suddenly, even the word suddenly is within a moment. It's a measurement within time and space. So this is what you say to the Muslim. You say, since your Allah is outside of time and space, that means he can't even think. Because thoughts require moments. And moments is a span of time. This will totally destroy their claim that Allah is a living God. That's why the Bible say God is not dead. He is alive. But the Muslims cannot say that because they make these these audacious claims and they say things like Allah is outside of time and space and he is not like anything in creation. But it comes with so many severe theological repercussions like I'm breaking down to you right now. This is the metaphysical aspect of it. OK, now you say to them, since he is outside of time and space, that means he can't think. Because because thinking requires a moment. And every time you think, it has a speed to it. Speed is the amount of distance covered in a given span of time. So that, that, that thought, it registers. Even if it's a billionth of a second, that's time. And time and space coexist with each other. So when the Muslims tell us that Allah is outside of space and time, they have basically said to us that Allah is dead. So they now they have to say that the thoughts of Allah. It has to be an attribute of Allah. It can't be Allah himself because Allah cannot think because he is outside of time and space. So if he is outside of time and space. He can't you they can't even say that his thoughts are an attribute of him. Because even his thinking is outside of time and space. But we just explained how everything that you think takes place within a moment, which is a span of time. So their God is dead. He does not exist. And this is how you get the Muslims busted. And this is how you prove that Allah is dead. Thank you for tuning in. This is Brother Jacob. It's been fun. I want you all to share these videos, post them. Keep these arguments in mind so the next time a Muslim tells you that Allah is outside of time and space, you can embarrass them and they won't have anything to say. And with that, thank you for tuning in. This is Brother Jacob and this is the False Prophet channel where we get Islam busted and the False Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, busted on a regular basis. Like, share, like, share and subscribe. God bless.